This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. That it is. Today, the 24th of April, 2023. And a look at the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell is what we're about to dive into. We'll have courtroom audio for you a little bit later on in the day once we receive that from the court, the gatekeeper of the audio, if you will. But let's uh, talk about what happened uh, in uh, court today quite a bit. It was a packed courtroom. We're entering now the fourth week, the third week of testimony, fourth week in whole, if you're counting the jury selection. Uh, from week number one, atmosphere tense as it has been as the prosecution called Rexburg Detective David Stubbs to the stand to testify. Detective Stubbs' testimony provided some crucial insights into the electronic search warrants and digital evidence gathered by the police during their investigation of the case. Stubbs was being very detailed about the extensive efforts made by law enforcement to track down and analyze the digital footprints of Lori Vallow, her brother Alex Cox, and her late husband Chad Daybell. Detective described how the police had managed to trace email addresses, phone numbers, and even online music accounts associated with the trio. That'd be interesting. What what sort of music were they listening to as they slowly executed people left and right? What do you think that playlist has on it? I don't know. I I really I I'm gonna guess it's like something like light rock, something you would not expect to be being listened to by the woman who allegedly ends up killing uh, her children. One of the most significant moments of Stubbs' testimony came when he shared information about the discovery of two abandoned cell phones found in Lori's apartment. These devices, tied to an email address belonging to Alex Cox, revealed a trove of crucial data. It shed a lot of light in the case. The investigation also uncovered a large number of electronic devices seized from Lori's rental car in Hawaii. She was on it with electronic devices, lots of burner phones. So it's kind of hard to say she didn't know what she was doing. The police obtained search warrants for these devices, which led to the discovery of numerous emails, addresses, and those phone numbers associated with Lori, Chad, and Alex. Another critical aspect of Stubbs' testimony revolved around the geolocation data that was obtained from the suspect's cell phones. Law enforcement issued search warrants to Google for data on key dates and locations in an attempt to identify the devices that might be associated with the alleged murders. Stubbs went on to describe a vast amount of data retrieved from Google accounts linked to Lori, including emails, photos, and other digital content. The data, which was shared among multiple investigators, provided a lot of valuable leads in the case. The courtroom listened intently as Stubbs detailed the use of burner phones, pay-as-you-go devices often used by criminals to avoid being tracked. He also explained how search warrants were issued to various companies, uh, including Amazon, Google, and Fitbit. The trial took an unexpected turn when the prosecution presented an exhibit detailing Chad Daybell's internet search history. In a particular and peculiar twist, it was revealed that Chad had searched for wind direction on September 8th. Why would someone be searching for wind direction? Is it because they want to have a nice campfire with s'mores or because they want to see if the smelling and the scent of burning children are going to you know, permeate the air and head down to Rexburg where somebody may go, kind of smells like burning kids on your property. Might we take a look around? The September 8th date is important uh, because that's the day uh, it's alleged that he had burned the limbs of the kids and told everyone else he killed a raccoon. As the day's testimony continued, the prosecution moved to admit several other exhibits into evidence, including a document prepared by Stubbs and the FBI for Google uh, containing the names and email addresses of individuals associated with Lori. Detective Nicole Heidemann's testimony during the hearing provided a comprehensive overview of the couple's digital footprints, uh, which reviewed the series of alarming online activities, the phone records, the email exchanges, uh, and uh, many of the different addresses that they all had been using for different intents. Chad Daybell's Google search history uh, was, like I said, very concerning. Uh, also, he was searching for uh, obituaries compatibility between zodiac signs as you're killing your <laughs> wife's children i wonder how compatible we are let's look at our zodiac signs <laughs> okay and information on a malachite uh 
ring, a toxic mineral believed to have spiritual properties, uh, which is also what their rings were made out of that Lori had bought through her dead ex-husband's Amazon account. On July 9th, 2019, Chad searched for when you surprise someone with accusations. So kind of preparing, how do I react? Because I'm not human. How do I react when I get accused of killing the kids? In September of that year, he looked up the definition of SSW wind, a seemingly random query. Lori Vallow's account also revealed troubling search activity following Charles Vallow's death in July of 2019. Lori searched for wedding bands made of malachite, wedding dresses at Kauai, and life insurance policies for children. Find a way to cash those in. Furthermore, her her account rather showed searches of how to remove the rear seat of her Jeep Wrangler. The couple's phone records were equally revealing. Between October 2018 and 2020, Chad Daybell was linked to nine different phone numbers, while Lori Vallow and Alex Cox, Lori's brother, each had six. Many of the numbers were found to be associated with burner phones, which are commonly used, you know, by criminals, as we have said. Their phones were linked to various uh, different accounts uh, as well. Additionally, the courtroom was shown photographs of Chad and Lori's hearing, or sorry, rather, Chad and Lori's Wedding in Hawaii, November 5th of 2019, the couple appeared happy and carefree. This is the one where Chad has a ukulele and Lori's looking carefree and everything's wonderful and your children aren't buried in Chad's backyard back in Idaho and everything's great. Stand, but they are uh, standing in front of a Latter-day Saints temple and embracing each other. The pictures displayed the couple's Malachite wedding rings, the same rings Lori had searched four months earlier while Chad's wife, Tammy, was still alive. In a particularly chilling moment, Detective Heidemann revealed that Lori had been searching for the wedding dresses on the same day as Tammy's funeral. This callous act demonstrated the couple's utter disregard for the pain and suffering of those around them. The detectives also investigated the mysterious death of, deaths of Lori's children, Tylee and JJ. Children's remains found buried on Daybell's property in June of 2020. Although there has been no direct evidence yet that has been presented linking Lori or Chad to the deaths, the complex web of lies and deceit surrounding the couple, raising a lot of questions about their uh, involvement and exactly how, uh, how involved were they in the physical acts, if you will. Because we know it wasn't a raccoon that Chad wanted to get his hands on. By the afternoon, Special Agent Nick Balance of the FBI Cellular Analysis Survey Team, otherwise known as CAST, he played a critical role in the tracking of the movements and communications of Lori and Chad on the morning of September 9th, 2019. According to Balance, there was a flurry of communication between the two, as well as with Lori's brother, Alex Cox. Cox's movements that morning were tracked using an account associated with his phone, which repeatedly registered locations northwest of Lori's Rexburg apartment. Moreover, throughout the trial, FBI tactical specialist Nicole Heidemann had been responsible for presenting key pieces of evidence. Among these are the text messages exchanged between them on various locations, including before the deaths of Tylee and JJ and Chad's wife, Tammy. Heidemann's analysis of the couple's search history revealed with uh, revealed in court today shared a uh, uh, shared interest in the malachite uh, metal, a green mineral, That's associated with Archangel Raphael. And as we know, they get into a lot of that. That's where I think the the Malachite comes in. The couple also conducted several Google searches for Malachite in May of 2019. And Lori attempted to purchase two glow-in-the-dark machete rings from Etsy in 2019. The trial also shed some light on Lori and Chad's frequent visits to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Temple. Both before and after their marriage, Heidemann presented records of their visits, which took place in Idaho, Texas, and Arizona, noting that their uh, temple-recommended cards were often scanned within seconds of each other. Further adding to the complex picture of the couple's relationship, Heidemann revealed that Lori tried to purchase a wedding ring for Chad in 2019 using that Amazon account of her deceased husband, She initially ordered an 11.5 size ring, which was later exchanged for a size 11 and then a size 10 after Tammy Daybell's death. Size 10 ring appears to match the one seen in Chad and Lori's wedding photos. Lots of bizarre 
twists, lots of interesting testimony. In addition to the text messages, Heidemann uncovered documents in Lori's iCloud account that discussed the seven archangels and the presiding council of archangels. These documents ma mention Malachite, the color green, and the day Tuesday, the same day of the week which Chad and Lori ended up getting married. And I have to say this, too, because we've all been wondering about Ned Schneider. You know, the Ned Schneider is the name of the demon that Lori and Chad claimed had possessed uh, Lori's husband, Charles Vallow, before he was killed by Alex Cox uh, at, uh, at the home. Uh, there was a Google search in here today that looked up Ned Schneider, Louisiana, obituaries, 1997. And you can bet the first thing I did when I saw that that was who they were searching for was Ned Schneider, Louisiana, obituary 1997. I tried to Google it too. I have come up empty handed thus far, but I'm thinking there may be some sort of connection to this Ned Schneider that he exists in some way, shape or form. Because that honestly is one of the things I am most curious about. Where did you come up with the name Ned Schneider for a demon of all things? I don't know. We'll uh, just have to sit back and wait to find more of that out. We'll have courtroom audio for you as soon as we get it from the court later today here on the feed. Be sure to press subscribe so you don't miss any of it. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi.